Just when you thought it was safe to turn on the television again, Racing to Win is back for another season of Hong Kong Racing and it all starts this Sunday at Sha Tin. September 10, Sha Tin is uh, race meeting number one for the season. We've got it covered for you all right here on Race Tin to Win. The boys are back in Tom Wood and Paul Lally. And Paul, not only are you two back, sell the jackpots. Oh, it's some really good ones too to start the season off. So plenty of money, no changes from the back end of last season. 18 million going into the triple trio. A 4 million going into the six win bonus. If that doesn't get you excited enough. And the fifth double trio, it's six million there as well. So that's a good jackpot as well. It's like when you put those menthos in the Coke can and away it goes, right? <laughs> The Mentos. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Been doing some lab experience in the off season, have you? Yeah, scientific experience. <laughs> Tom joins us as well. Tom, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, looking forward to uh, Sunday Mark, uh, Chief Executive Cup, Lucky Swain S. Of course, he's got to give £20 to uh, his nearest rival, Victor the winner. They've had an unorthodox to preparation. Of course, the weather curtailing at the trials uh, last week, so they had to trial on Monday morning. So hence, we've got a few lighter fields for the weekend. Thanks, Tom. If you're new to racing in Hong Kong, even if you're not, let's have a look at some of the facts and figures that are going to take place with the last season having 88 meetings and 835 races, turnover of $141 billion, while this season's prize money is well over the billion dollars to be distributed as well. We've got Longines HKIR coming up on the 10th of December. $118 million goes on offer. $72 million the 28th of April. Put it in the diary for FWD Champions Day 2024. Zach Purden, a record 179 wins last season and now a six-time champion jockey. John Size added yet another premiership to his collection. A 12-time champion trainer is John, 79 wins for the campaign in season 22 and 23. The highest rated horses, Golden 60 with 25 wins, a 131 Hong Kong rating and Lucky Swainess also rated 131, also crowned champion four year old and also racing this weekend at Sha Tin. He's back and back very early in the season for Manfred Mann. Champion stay was Douglas White's Russian Emperor who won both here in Hong Kong and overseas. The champion Griffin from last season was the orange colours of How Deep Is Your Love? And on a down under path, the champion middle distance horse, Danny Shum's Romantic Warrior. That's some um, facts and figures from last season and a little bit of sprinkling of new season information as well. Nick Child has caught up with one of the new faces in the riding ranks here in Hong Kong for the current season. It is Andrea Rizzini. Yeah, no, it's nice to be back. Um, he's obviously been a while since, uh, since I've been here. Um, I did a small stint in 2014, and, uh, but I have been here since for the, for the big international meeting. And uh, so, yeah, it's nice to be back. And, uh, you know, we, we already get the ball rolling. You know, we track work and barrier trials, so it's been busy. What are your memories, Andrea, of that, that first stint here in Hong Kong? Of course, you more than anybody would appreciate how, how tough a place it is. Um, how much are you looking forward to, to being back? What, what have you taken from that initial uh, stay here in Hong Kong those years ago? Um, I'm obviously, I'm approaching it in a different type of way this time. Um, when I came nine years ago, I was quite young and, and uh, I probably wasn't really prepared for Hong Kong. And um, so it was a bit of a shock to the system for me. Um, so I, was, I only stayed here for about six weeks. and. Um, 
and then went back to UK. Whether whether obviously now nine years on, and I know I'm hoping I'm hoping to be a bit more mature mentally. And now, nah, but listen, it's it's I'm taking it differently. You know, it's 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 great to be here. Um, it was something that came from nowhere really. I wasn't really expecting to be in Hong Kong this time, but uh, obviously the club um, approached me and. Um, no, it's, I thought it was a, for me it's a right time of my career to, to come back. Uh, you quoted Andrea as saying it, it, it's life changing, uh, this move, which, which it potentially can be for any jockey. Uh, so, uh, from what you obviously have, have already said, I, I guess you, your life has changed that little bit in that, that nine year period to, to sort of think this is the right time to come here now. 100%, yes. Um, it is a life changing, obviously, not so much with your career, but a bit of both, obviously, your career and, and, and lifestyle in general. But, um, you know, my. You know, like I said, when the, when the phone call arrived, I, I thought about it quite carefully and I came to the conclusion I thought it was a very good idea uh, to come to Hong Kong at this stage of my career. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a great opportunity and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, you know, I'm much more ready at this time and uh, I'm trying to get busy as busy as I can and it would be nice to get the ball rolling. Um, but listen, it's one of those things, I'm in not any, any hurry. Um, this time I'll make sure I'll give it a chance to hopefully do well enough to to be able to stay for, for a while. Andrea, for, for those that maybe don't know as much about you, just a sort of an overview of obviously what you have achieved, there's been plenty of success in the UK, plenty of Group 1 success, some very recent Group 1 success as well with the likes of Van Dijk, etc. Um, how much has that stood you in good stead to come here? Because it's a different ball game here, isn't it? It is, yeah. Obviously, I never really look back at what I've done, but I think if you look through, I think I've got you know, a decent CV. Um, I think I rode 30 Group 1 winners all over the world. Um, more than 1,200 races. I won more than 1,200 races in U just in UK, and I was lucky enough to race everywhere, really. So you know that's 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 another thing that has changed in the last nine years. Obviously, a lot more experience globally, and uh, yeah, and I was lucky to win a Group 1 a week. I think it was like 10 days before I came out here. So yeah, it was nice to to finish on a high. And that group one in France. So he arrives here, Tom, in very good form, does Andrea. As mentioned in the interview, he has been here before, but this is uh, what his stats look like. Yeah, that was going back to the 2014-15 season and uh, what he had uh, three wins here in Hong Kong, but uh, he's obviously matured a lot since then and uh, you can just see, Paul, how many winners he's had and also how many at the, the elite level as well. Yeah, definitely. I remember him actually riding here back in 2014 and he just started to hit his straps towards the end of that little stint that he had as well. So, look, he, he's had that uh, experience now we know he's a very good rider, so I think he's very, very good uh, a jockey coming to the ranks here. Three rides he has. Which one is the best ball? Well, look, Beauty Crescent um, probably is an improver. Precise Express is on a bit of a, a towards a downgrade at the moment. I don't like you for deal on the grass. No, he trialled OK the other day, but uh, looking for the all-wear, that's where he did his best racing last season. Beauty Crescent, um, Ireland, uh, blinkers on, he won mm. there. He trialled with blinkers on here, wasn't too bad. He did make some late ground in that trial, uh, did Beauty Crescent. Uh, Tom, he's not the only new addition to the jockey's room, Andrea. Keegan DeMillo joins us from South Africa. He does, and uh, he's a premiership winning jockey over in South Africa, is uh, Keegan, so great to have him uh, with us, and uh, he'll certainly make a dent here. We've seen South Africans, we know, Douglas White at the top of the tree, Paul, in terms of uh, the South Africans here, but Lyle Hewitt's and uh, another South African that made great inroads, so they, they do adapt well to Hong Kong racing. Yeah, they do, don't they? And look, the, the young ones that get here, they right throughout the, the years, we've seen some really good South Africans, and he comes with a very good CV. Not only two new faces in the jockey's room, Paul, a couple of new trainers as well in Mark Newnham and Cody Moe. And Mark had the old boy right honourable trial really well the other day. It trialled well, didn't it? Yeah, look, he's got, uh, you know, the, we see these new trainers with these second-hand horses. They come through. He'll come through and bring his own horses as well. But we know he's a very good trainer back in, in Australia. And uh, I think he's uh, he's going to go, go well. Yep, and Cody Moe, of course, mm. uh, was with uh, Tony Cruz, long-time assistant trainer. Yep. There you have it. All of the new faces for racing for the upcoming season in Hong Kong, which means we can now focus on the first meeting. It is meeting 01 on the A course and we kick off with a 10 race program. 12.25, it's an early start. We are taking two races from South Korea, thus a 12.25 start through until a 6.10 finish. The two races we focus, the 4th and the 10th. 
the fourth race is the HKSR Chief Executives Cup and it's over the 1200 metres. Lucky Swainess returns. He has 135 pounds to carry with Zach Purton and Manfred Mamby. He's carried that top weight to victory twice. Victor the winner and second to Lucky Swainess when they last met. Rewarding together has won six times over 1200 but all at Happy Valley. Adios comes here on the back of the strong trial. I'm a single man's place two from three first up but just struggling for form a little bit and youthful deal as the boys mentioned has been better on the all weather than the turf. The speed map here, Tom. Well, Lucky Swain is drawn in Barry number six, so uh, Zach, I guess, has got options whether he can just see what the other horses are going to do inside of him, sum the situation up and get into a, a position where he wants to be, which is probably likely to be stalking uh, Victor the winner. We know he can be a little bit uh, slow from the gate sometimes, uh, Lucky Swain is, but uh, he'll certainly get his opportunity. Uh, Adios and youthful deal, Paul I'm a single man, he's been out of form. He's been, yeah, has, hasn't he? Look, he should go back and then... Look, Youthful Deal, you're, you're right, he might slot him behind Youthful Deal, Lucky Swain S, but I think he, would, he wouldn't want to keep Victor, uh, the winner, too far away because we know he's a very speedy horse. We're going to start, though, Paul, with a race from last season which does feature Victor, the winner, Lucky Swain S, rewarding together, and I'm a single man. Now, you did the track work, so you see these horses lots. Lucky Swain S was kept in work for a fair while after this, wasn't he? Yeah, he was right through the season. He actually had a gallop right at the end of the season. I thought they might, might be trying to run him, um, but they didn't in the end. Uh, to get that record for the nine wins. You can see here, he, he kept nice and close to Victor, the winner, and uh, did win. It's a similar weight uh, carrying as well with uh, Lucky Swain S with 135 and um, Victor, the winner now with uh, the minimum. So, look, um, look on, on what we've seen here, he should beat him again, but uh, I think this is the Quinella for sure. On that track, you mentioned he had two gallops in June, he had two gallops in July, so since last racing he's had 11 gallops in total, so they've kept him busy, it's interesting, it's going to be hot at Chartin on Sunday afternoon, big weight, first up, is there going to be a few things that sort of take their toll with him first up, I wonder? You sound a little nonplussed about him. I've got him on top, but... It's a race I'm happy to watch. OK, there's the weight turnarounds, Tom, from that last race that we just saw. You can see the beaten margins uh, there. The margin between Lucky Swainess and Victor, the winner, a length and a half. It's, uh, there's no turnaround here. It's, it's 20 pounds again, uh, rewarding together, minus one. And I'm a single man who's been terribly out of form, just not really sure where he's at at the moment. It's been 252 days, Paul, since he's won a race. Yeah, exactly. He's been a long time, isn't he? And I can't see it turning around in this race for sure. And that is what Lucky Swainess has done so far. 13 from 17, including three Group 1s last season, the Chairman's Sprint Prize, the Queen's Silver Jubilee and the Centenary Sprint Cup. They've also tangled at the trial this pair, Paul, with a 1,000 metre trial. Victor the winner drawn two, Lucky Swainess drawn in barrier number one. Yeah, they both trialled really well. Um, they did what they had to do in this particular trial. Um, this wasn't that long ago as well, just back on the 4th of September. So... Look, they're both in really good form coming into it. We know Victor the winner is a young horse on his way through, uh, as well as his lucky Swain S. I mean, they're both um, exciting horses leading in. And look, I, I think it's between the two of them. I mean, I think lucky Swain S, I understand your reserves there as well. Um, uh, Tom, but I think it's the Quinella one and two. Yeah, both coming into this uh, on the on the fresh side, 98 days since they've uh, had a run, of course, uh, when Lucky Swainish was able to win, as we saw on the, the Shart in Vars. He, he jumped pretty well in this barrier trial, and he was in front for most of the way. This was on Monday morning uh, at uh, Shart in. So he's, he's just got the big weight to, to handle here, but he, he seemed to move really well. Uh, Manfred Mann's obviously happy with where the horse is at. Zach Purton was riding. But you can see Victor the winner here to, uh, to his uh, outside, really making a, a good fist of it over the final stages. And Danny Schumann a, a trainer that can get his horses up and running at the beginning of the season. This was the quickest trial down the straight on Monday morning as well. And both of them have had one start first up for a win, so not too much between them as far as the stats go, but uh, it was a win for Lucky Swainess as we saw when they last raced. And then we move on to that trial. Now we go on to more race form here. Tom with Adios on the inside of Rewarding Together. He's just held up Adios, but he will get through and be too good. She had a good season last season. Adios, uh, didn't he? 16 starts for four wins and a handful of minor placings. Uh, Frankie Law's done a great job with him to take him from a rating of 65 at the beginning of the season all the way up to uh, 99. You, you had to like the way he attacked the line here, Paul. Yeah, it was a really good run. Look, I, it's nowhere near the same form as we've seen with the other two. But look, he, I think he's the horse that can fill the minor place. 
racing for sure. Eddie Olsen, he's a very, very versatile horse. Remember, he won on the All Weather as well last season. And he trolled up very strongly on the All Weather too. Yeah, he does. He really likes it, doesn't he? We need some selections. I'm suggesting they're going to be pretty much similar from both of you boys, and we've spent no ex have spared no expense on the new graphic for the uh, <laughs> tips as well, Paul. There we go. You can see the colours there next. And one, two, four, three. Uh, for me, I think this is on paper very straightforward. Uh, Lucky Sway Nest to beat Victor the winner, and then the the pairing there of Adios and uh, rewarding together. Yeah, I think you can certainly take that forecast there with those uh, top two, Lucky Swainess and also uh, Victor the winner. Outside of that, I give uh, Adios a, a good chance uh, in the race. Um, comes into this uh, fresh up. He's placed fresh before and uh, his barrier trial, he looked good in that winning. Rewarding together has never won at Charton, but he's run some good races uh, recently, has rewarding together. Always pretty honest. Would prefer him but at Happy Valley, but they've got to take the opportunities uh, when these sort of races pop up. So one, two, four and three. There it is, all of the information for race number four at Shard 10. We're going to take a break here on Racing to Win, back with plenty more right after this. Welcome back to Racing to Win. We're making our way through the season opener at Shard 10 on Sunday. And before we go on, we're going to look at a couple of races outside of the main preview show right now. Paul's got a new segment for us and we've named it Last Run Reminder. Yeah, we did a look at a couple of horses just to... Refresh your memory and looking at some of these uh, horses that have, have done pretty well or I think can improve here coming into the season. I mean, the first one we're going to have a look at here, Super Fast Dragon. What did you like about his run last time, which was incidentally at the season finale? It was, wasn't it? Look, I think this horse, look, he's only had the five starts to date. He was 28 to 1 here and he was sort of buffered around a bit. You can see him back at the back with those blue sleeves. Uh, he's had plenty of work in the off season and I just like the way he finished off. He was stopped in his tracks a couple of times at a vital time, but he kept going. Now, this was slightly longer over the 1200 but prior to this he ran really well over the straight 1000 he's also trialed well over the straight before as well 28 to 1 last time I always like a bit of value I think he'll uh, he'll pay a bit of a price he's a big horse too isn't he mm. there's plenty of him yeah Roman Turbo is the other one Paul he hasn't won for a little while two years <laughs> <laughs> he's due though isn't he look you have a look at this run here he's only had the one run for Chris so now he drew wide he went all the way to the back uh, and uh, you can see him in the straight when he gets into the straight he really hits the line strong he's had a few trainers this horse he's drawn barrier number five now his last win was off an 81 one rating. The uh, the uh, very um, kind handicappers have dropped them five in the off season as well. So he comes down to a rating, I think, which is very winnable of 56 uh, with that uh, five um, sort of point drop when he's been re-rated. Look at him come down the outside, hit the line strongly. Another one that's looked good in the off season. He summered really well this horse. So we'll, just with that. Um, what rating he's at, I think he's going to definitely run a bit of a race. And you can find more last run reminders on the website. Yeah, there is. So that'll come up just before the race meeting and uh, there should be about 15 horses up there for you. Yeah, right, and Paul will pick the top two for each and every show here on Racing to Win. But we need to look at race number 10 right now. The Time Ocean handicap over the 1,400 metres and Flaming Rabbits, a two-time course and distance winner. Super Sunny Singh, we haven't seen him since the derby. Sylvester's placed two from four first up. Handsome 12 has all of his best form on the all Find My Love won two from his last three and ran second in the other one. Galaxy Witness going over his favourite trip. Prime Minister's placed a two from five first up and Winner Method, he's been a winner previously first up in the past. So that's a look at the runners in race number 10. Tom, flaming rabbit, no horse in Hong Kong, leaves the gate faster. He does, Mark. He leaves really fast. He did that again last time and was able to uh, try and dictate off the front. Uh, wasn't quite able to do so over the final stages, but he does leave fast. Winner Method should get himself into a, a good spot from barrier number seven. He's a he's a horse that can lead, but he's probably likely to take a sit. Saw vest from barrier number one. Then you've got the golden scenery and find my love. Handsome 12, Paul, uh, probably going to struggle here on the turf. Yeah, again, he's another weather horse, isn't he? He's, he's like to get back. And Galaxy Witness runs his best races when he gets back and runs on. All right, we're going to start though with a replay of Paul of Flaming Rabbit. This was in defeat last time, 1600 metres. So he comes back in trip to a distance he's proven at. Yeah, look, I think that's the ideal for him. He's got a uh, lug the big weight of 134, but you can see how fast he is out of the gates there with this horse. A Lyle Hewitt, and we know he's a, a very good jockey on these front running horses as well. I think they'll do the same here. And look, he's one of the top chances for me. 
Yeah, he certainly is. Just the way he's going at the moment. I remember speaking to Douglas White at the back end of last season, and he was sort of in a conundrum whether he gelds him or doesn't geld him. Obviously, they've made the decision that they they weren't going to uh, geld him, and time will tell if that has been the, the best decision or not. Now, there was a bit of interference in this race over the final stages because he was actually third past the line, but he was relegated by the stewards because uh, a little bit of a, a bump with uh, Tuchel over the final stages. He just wanted to uh, run out, but he hasn't taken long to uh, acclimatise uh, Paul, and uh, I think on top of the ground again, if we get a, a dry track, that's definitely going to be a, a big plus as well. Yeah, definitely, and the 1400, as we've said, you know, like he just got tired, and that's why he ran out a bit and got relegated. There is the head-on. You can see Tuchel yeah. there, Tom, in the light blue and white and flaming rubber, just as he starts to get tired, wants to lug up the track. Yeah, there's sort of got about 200 metres or so to go. He's, he's running straight and true at this point, and you can see Lyle Hewitson just getting stuck into him. He's got the, the, the whip there in the, the outside hand, but then just wants to, to run out. So Lyle's done pretty much everything he possibly can, but the horse has just come to the end of his run and a little bit of a bump there, and it was significant enough, uh, significant enough for the, the stewards to overturn that. He's had one trial to prepare for Sunday. Wasn't asked to do too much in that. Speaking of trials here, Paul Flaming Rabbit, here he is in that trial where he runs fifth, Galaxy Witness sixth and Prime Minister seventh. What did you make of this trio? Yeah, look, I, I like flying, um, Flaming Rabbit, as I said, and I, I like Galaxy Witness. I'm going to include him as well. Look, I, I like to see Prime Minister maybe back at... Um, uh, happy Valley for him, but look, it was a nice, easy trial for the two I aforementioned because they both hit the line well. Yeah, they certainly had high hopes last season for a Galaxy Witness, but look, it's been quite a long time since he's been able to win a race now where Galaxy Witness, of course, they tried to put him through the, the four-year-old series, but he's back at his ultimate pet trip now. One horse that did go through the four-year-old series, Tom, is Super Sunny Singh. He did a great job in the four-year-old series also. He was a winner over the 1800 in the Classic Cup, eighth in the Derby. We haven't seen him since then and has had just this one quiet trial. So he's given him a, a long break, has uh, Chris So to uh, get him over that uh, campaign that he had last uh, season. I thought he found the line pretty well here over the, the final stages of this uh, barrier trial. First up, he hasn't won or run in the top three, but he has had the odd excuse. But course and distance, I think, uh, is going to suit him down to the ground here. Yeah, he had a really bad experience on debut, didn't he? He played up in the gates, he hit his head and everything went wrong for him on that occasion. So, I uh, forgive there, I think. The, the distance is key for me. 1,400 metres, uh, two starts, two wins. That is a super sunny sing. Next up, Paul, we go to a horse that was always very consistent, but not so much at the back end of last season, the golden scenery. He runs third in this trial at Chung Fa, but was hard ridden to keep his spot. He was, wasn't he? And that just concerned me a little bit uh, with him. He's only won the three from the 27. I think I've tipped him 26 of those 27 starts as well, because he always looks good and he always works well. But look, he was just pushed out a little bit here. So look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit on the sidelines and watch him go round in this. It might be to my peril. Yeah, over, overall, he, last season, he, he didn't actually win a race. He had 14 starts, had a, a couple of other minor placings, but another one that's coming into this with a, a long drought between wins. That was the golden scenery. Few in this uh, next replay, Tom, including Saul Vest, Galaxy Witness, Fifth Flaming Rabbit leads for home, and Find My Love has been absolutely flying lately. He was uh, at the back end of last season. Mark two wins and a, a good second behind Flaming Rabbit here last uh, time out. I thought uh, pretty much had every chance last uh, time out. He's been to the trials. He's had a, a third in the trial. He ran on quite nicely out wider on the, the track. But uh, he's another one, Paul, that really sort of found his sort of niche here in Hong Kong at the, the back end of last season here over the the four. 1400 metres. Yeah, I was, I was pleased to see that because he was a horse that I've always sort of flagged up from track work that he looked like he could he could uh, really make the grade here in Hong Kong and he sort of showed it towards the back end. It's under Frank also. He's had the 11 starts for those two wins now, so I'm going to include him. I think it's quite a rich race, so we'll see if he's up to his mark or not. And Keith e. Young, a good record on him. Four rides for two wins and a placing. There's the fast start trainers. Both of you boys have spoken about uh, trainers getting off to a good start. Tom, Ricky, you, you've mentioned David Hayes, a great uh, start last season. Yeah, he was striking at 17.3% through the first uh, 10 meetings was uh, David Hayes. He had uh, 52 runners for nine winners. Uh, Tony Cruz, he's another one, Paul, that normally begins well. He certainly trains his horses uh, reasonably hard. Casper Founds, and then you've got uh, John Size, who um, made the list. Uh, there were a few others sort of scraping around the, the five or four mark that didn't quite get there, but John Size up there as well. Yeah, he's up there. And look, Casper Founds, we, we know he comes to the fore at Happy Valley as well. So, look, he's got quite a good hand, though, here on um, Sunday. Who wins the last ball? I'm going to go with uh, the two on top, Super Sunny Singh, just on that uh, record of two starts, two wins over the 1,400 metres, like the way he hit the line in his trial. Flaming Rabbit in there for second. He should go to the front, catch me if you can. Find my love, has found form at the back end of last season. And uh, Galaxy Witness, one, two, one, six, seven. 
I'm around the top three in this race, but I think Super Sunny Singh first up here over the 1,400 metres can certainly win. He's had a long break. Matthew Chadwick riding for Chris So. Flaming Rabbit uh, probably going to be one of the ones that's toughest to beat off the front. Saw Vest and Find My Love. Two, one, three and six. We've come to the point of the show where, Paul, we need your best bet, your long shot and your play. Yeah, we're going to go with uh, Super Fast Dragon as my best here. Look, the horse hasn't won in Hong Kong. He's had the five starts. Uh, he's tried really well recently, I thought, and that was down the straight 1,000. He's going to race over that 1,000 metres. He ran really well over it, uh, slightly longer last time, but has run fourth down the straight 1,000. He's 28 to 1 uh, at this, in this particular run. I think he's summoned really well this horse, so hopefully uh, the big boy can uh, get up at a, at a decent price as well. You can see him finishing in nicely there and he wasn't pressed out. It wasn't a particularly strong trial, but just the way he did it I really liked. It was a super fast dragon. So he's the best. The long shot we're going to do is uh, race eight number two, four runner. Now he won on debut, won up fresh. He's in that state uh, again, obviously, on Sunday and he had really... Um, uh, he had a really good excuse at his last start. The play of the day we're going to do in race number three, which is as easy as one, two, three. Greenwich ready to win and speedy smarty in the third. My best comes up in race six. He's on debut. Champion method for Danny Shum and Zach Purton, a three-year-old by I Am Invincible, who's had four trials. Ever Blessing has drawn better. He's the Valley Race uh, 2 number five for Ricky Yu and uh, Brenton Abdullah. He's had a couple of awkward draws and uh, the play in that same race with the Fortune Warrior, who's been trialling nicely. So too, more rice up at Chungfa and Ever Blessing. It is a race two, number two, Fortune Warrior. Tom mentioned he'd been trialling well. Good trial from him last time and a much better race appearance from him when we saw him previously as well. Zach Purton for Pierre Ong. Sparkling Dolphin, good record, fresh and down the straight. Dylan Moe can get himself an early winner, as can Mi Choi. And the play comes up. Race two, a forecast, two, Fortune Warrior and five, Ever Blessing, two and five. That is his uh, look at uh, Shatin on uh, Sunday. Now, as far as the diary goes, 11.55 trackside live, the first at 12.25 for the season opener. Wednesday, on early at 6.40. That's five minutes early than normal when there's an eight-race program because the first is at 10 minutes past seven Hong Kong time and then back to 12.30 for Shatin next Sunday. But the journey begins this Sunday. The first of 88 meetings gets underway. We've had plenty of rain in Hong Kong, Tom, but hopefully the worst of it is behind us. It's an early start because we've got some racing from South Korea. Yeah, looking forward to those two races from Korea. Good luck to appear on with his couple of runners over there, Duke Wai and also Apache Pass, who will no doubt fly the flag for Hong Kong, China. Yeah, everyone's ready, ready to go, and it's getting ready for another really good season here in Hong Kong. It is. We've got Lucky Swain S taking on Victor, the winner, in our feature race on the weekend. But that has been the first episode of Racing to Win. Plenty more to come throughout the season, but we'll see you at Sha Tin Sunday.